You guys may be seated. Uh, I just want to thank David Nass real quick for giving me the honor to introduce today's speaker. Uh, today's speaker is Dr. Samuel Thomas. Uh, he is the president of Hope Givers International. He's a pastor, uh, he is an evangelist, and he is a humanitarian. But most important to me, he is my father. Um, I don't get to spend as much time with him as I like, so like every moment we have together is very special to me. Not only does my dad get up here and preach the things he preaches, but he actually lives them. And it's an encouragement to me to see that on a daily basis. Whenever I'm struggling, I know where to look, and I know he set the example so that I can follow it. Throughout the years, he's just been an encouragement in my life, and I just want to thank you guys for letting him come today and just help me welcome Dr. Samuel Thomas. Well, praise God. I've never been introduced like that. I feel like a pancake with syrup all over me. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor David Dasser, for the opportunity to come to Liberty University today and share what God's doing in India and around the world. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Jerry Falwell, who's now with the Lord, my mentor, champion of champions, to Dr. Maisel, Dr. Jerry Jr., Dr. Jonathan Falwell, I thank you for educating my son, our son, and I pray that one day he too will follow the footstep of his grandfather and his father. I'm thankful to Dr. Ron Godwin and Duke Westover who introduced me to Liberty University. I had the privilege of being with Pastor David Nasser today, enjoyed listening to his heart. But what I love the most, he said he loves Liberty University students, and I said, I asked him why. He said, they're kinder, they're loving, gracious, deep-rooted, and they have attitude of gratitude. I commend such leader who appreciates the students of this university. And I also thank the Lord for his heart and passion that he wants to plant Christ City Church, 10,000 of them. I love that goal. And I love the worship band. I met them for the first time, Russia Falls. And uh, the reason I love them more today is because they are helping us in gathering the orphans, raising them to be missionaries for God. Most of you know the Ministry of Hope Givers. Since I was here last during your missions conference, I had 19 attempts of assassination. I had one more since then that makes it 20 attempts of assassination on my life. To me, Christ is real. God doesn't need sissies. He doesn't need wimps. He didn't say pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth loafers. He's looking for warriors who would say, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I would like for every student at Liberty University to hear me loud and clear that I pray every day, Lord, would you please give me the honor to be a martyr for your sake. When an American soldier dies, the flag in Washington goes half-mast. When an Indian soldier dies, the flag in New Delhi goes half-mast. But when the soldier of the cross dies, flag in heaven never goes half-mast because heaven never loses a citizen. It always gains one. I ask you to pray with us that Lord would help us to be strong during persecution. Since August 25, 2014, 22 pastors have been killed in India. I'm not asking you that you pray that God would keep us safe. By the way, Jesus did not die to keep us safe. He died to save us. And he wants to see that we become disciples who would turn the world upside down. Please do not ask God to guide your footsteps if you're not willing to move your feet. Before I bring the Lord's word to you today, if you have a paper and a pen, I'd like for you to write this five things down. How do you test a false prophet? 
There are many false prophets today in our world. How do you test them? First of all, you need to have a source test. What is their source? Is it the Word of God or something else? Secondly, you should do a Savior's test. Are they preaching about Christ or are they preaching about Christ as one of the many gods? Then you need to do a salvation test. Are they talking about salvation by many other gods or are they talking about salvation only through Christ? Then we need to do a spirit test. Are they talking about the Spirit of God? I love the Bible when it says, believe not every spirit, but test it whether they are of God or not. Then finally, you need to do a sanctification test. What do they mean by the word sanctification? You know, when God calls us, He gives us two calling. Sometimes He gives us both, sometimes He gives us one. When He calls us, He either asks us to go or He asks us to send. He never gave you a third calling, pray about it. Now, that's only if you're a child of God. If you're a born again Christian, you have only one of the two choices. Either you become a goer or a sender. Now, I like to share my heart to the Liberty students. I do pray that not only God calls Liberty students as missionaries around the world, but it would be a great day to hear some of you have become martyr for the sake of Christ. To the parents who are listening to me this morning, I'm sure you're nervous when you hear that, oh, we don't want our son to die. We don't want our daughter to die for the sake of Christ. I like to humbly remind you on the basis of the Word of God, your Isaac is at never at risk at the altar of God. Place your Isaac at the altar and the Lord will bless you. A vision of hope givers is to see one million orphan leaders by the year 2030. Some people laugh at that vision. Is it possible? Yeah, with God all things are possible. Will it happen in our lifetime? I pray so. But what if we don't get to see it in our lifetime? I know that without a shadow of doubt, before the Lord returns, we will see in India a church in every village and city of our country. Pastor Rabindranath, he was beheaded two years ago in the Ministry of Hope Givers. His wife was given Christmas gift on a steel plate, head of her husband. At that time, Hope Givers has 37,393 churches. As soon as they beheaded the servant of God, the Lord has blessed the ministry of Hope Givers today with 51,013 churches. Blood of martyrs are the seeds for new churches. I'd like to take your attention to book of 2 Chronicles. Book of 2 Chronicles chapter 25. 2 Chronicles chapter 25. If you have the right Bible, it's page 430. Now he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. In the New Living Translation it is written, Amaziah did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, but not with a whole heart. King Amaziah did all the right things, but he wasn't doing it with the whole heart. You can do the right things and still not be blessed. The reason is because you have done it with the wrong attitude. It is all about attitude when we serve Christ. You know, I pastor a church, we have three kind of members. Shiners, whiners, and recliners. Some just love to whine. I love to carry some cheese to go with their wine. They just complain, complain about everything. God loves a cheerful giver. Your level of giving determines the level at what you may receive. But your attitude in giving determines your abundance in receiving. Now let me just give you a small trick, just a small one. Please write the letter word attitude. A T T I T U D E. If letter A is the number one letter of the alphabet, then T is number 20. 
Then T is number 20. I is letter, the letter I is 9. T is 20. U is 21. D is 4. E is 5. If you calculate all of them together, it is 100%. 100% of your attitude matters when it comes to serving Christ. I do like to take your attention to just illustrate what I just read from 2 Chronicles to Luke chapter 10. Please turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10 and verse 42. But one thing is needful that Mary hath chosen the best part. Now, if you look at the story, it is from verses 40 through 42, talks about Martha worrying while she was serving Christ. Many people are good at worrying. Now, I know one thing, if you're good at worrying, you can be good at praying. Worrying is meditating on things you have done wrong. Praying is meditating on things what God has done for you. So if you're good at worrying, you can change that into praying. Worry is a bad thing. Martha worried and tried to tell the Lord. I love it in verse 40. When you start worrying, you even forget who the Lord is and who the servant is. The moment Martha started worrying in verse 40, she said to the Lord, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do this work alone? She forgot that she was talking to the Lord. Martha allowed the work of the Lord to become more important than the Lord of the work. I know many pastors who are so busy, all they do is talk about the work of the Lord that you hardly hear about the Lord of the work. Has that happened to you? If you don't guard your attitude, it will happen. Students of Liberty University, let me make this very clear to you that Satan does not mind you going to Liberty University. Satan does not mind you going to church. Satan does not mind you worshiping. Satan does not mind that you read Bible. But he does not want you to take focus off yourself. As long as he can make you say things like this, it was a great worship today, but I didn't like the heat. It was too hot. Oh, it was a great time today in worship, but one guitar was a little bit out of tune. If there's a way that Satan can inbuilt in you something to complain about, then he's happy that you have gone to church that he's happy that you're serving Christ. Friends, let me make this very clear to you. As a missionary, it is an honor for me to serve Christ. I'm not doing a favor to him, but I'm thankful that he chose me to serve him. I do it with joy, with delight. God values your attitude more than your service. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, do all things without murmuring and disputing. A bad attitude spoils the gift that you bring to the altar. Jesus prefers quiet devotion of a sincere heart over the noisy attitude of a complainer. I like to close with the illustration of Pastor Lalmani. He graduated from our Bible college five years ago. We sent him to the slums of New Delhi. He was beaten by the militants. Four trips ago, I received a call from our Indian office saying that we think that Pastor Lalmani is fighting for life. They have beaten him so badly that we think he's not going to make it. We have put him in the intensive care of the Apollo Hospital in New Delhi. Sam Thomas, please come before he passes on to glory to come and be with his family. I made a trip back to India, met the pastor. He had the Band-Aid with blood over his head. I said to him, I said, would you like for me to change your place? He said, no, sir. I said, I don't want you to be in a place where they will hurt your family. They beat his wife, broke her arm, broke the ribs of her, their son. These were the words of Lal Mani to me, and I like for Liberty University to hear it. He says, sir, I am not leaving this slum 
till the last breath of my life. And for me, it will be an honor to become a martyr in the slum for the sake of the gospel. Two weeks ago when I left, I met Pastor Lalmani again. Four months ago, he had nobody in his church. After he was beaten, almost killed, the Lord has blessed him now with 127 believers who have come to know Christ through this ministry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 127 believers, all because of one man who was faithful to the Lord. The attitude that Lalmani has, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Finally, I'd like to say to the Liberty University students, there is no greater achievement than to live for Christ. There is no greater joy than doing His will. There is no greater honor than having our master say, well done, faithful servant. Let us change our attitude into an attitude that glorifies Christ. Stop being a complainer. Thank God for all the blessings he has blessed you with before he takes the blessings away from you. God be the glory. Thank you very much.